biggest news of day in your realm is Joe Biden's uh, addressing the Munich Security Conference ahead of your colleague, uh, John Kerry, who's going to be uh, formalizing the re-entry of the United States into the Paris Climate Accords. But Biden just now, in his remarks, said, We can no longer delay or do the bare minimum to address climate change. This is a global existential crisis. It said that countries need to hold each other accountable for aggressively curbing emissions, right? So I have two questions about that, one of which is, like, what does that look like in practice? And the other is, if you heard from European countries having watched America drop out of Paris and now come back in, and an American European country said, you dropped out of these accords, you're just back, Johnny, come lately. How dare you lecture us about accountability? Well, I think if you listen to, to President Biden's remarks, you'll see that we know we have to be humble. I mean, how do you get over the past four years and say, OK, we've turned a page, everything's going to be great? The Paris Climate Agreement was good, but no countries are really meeting those commitments as yet. So we're kind of all in the same boat. Part of the job that I have is to make sure that domestically we make a really strong commitment. And we have to do that soon, so that it is not just we're back, but what are we bringing with us? You guys did a bunch of stuff right out of the shoot, but you did Keystone day one, right? Keystone, to our domestic politics, it's very polarizing and very symbolic. And you have, you know, the John Testers of the world and the labor movement vocally opposing your guys' decision yep. and, and kind of challenging why did you guys have to do this day one? I was a little bit surprised um, that people were outraged by it. Now, I get that it's been a, 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 an issue that had polarized people, but Joe Biden's been talking about being against Keystone since he was in the Obama administration. I think that what people worry about is that every pipeline now is going to end up in the same place, and that was not the signal to take away. I think you're right. A lot of people, not just the energy state Democrats who are worried about the jobs, but the Al Gores of the world and the Ilan Omars of the world, the Green New Deal people are like, here's the precedent. If you're against Keystone, you got to be against Dakota. you got to be against Enbridge. We're going to look at them each individually for what they bring to the table and what don't they bring to the table. We are not intending to use this as a way to kill everything. I'm not fighting fossil fuels right. as much as I'm fighting for clean energy. We gotta grow jobs in the places where it's consistent with moving forward. If we're being honest, right, you know, the Joe Biden Senate career was defined by judiciary and foreign affairs. You know, we look at Al Gore, passionate issue for him from 1976. You know, John Kerry passionate issue for him for a long time. Not an issue that was a defining issue about Joe Biden's career. So I ask you, how do you explain that it has become an issue on which he now is staking his legacy, that he's made a series of moves that, that the environmental groups are like, this is the guy, we've been waiting for years. But no one really thought it would be Joe Biden. No. Right. No, because that wasn't where he was focusing his attention. There's no question about it. This is the way I would explain it, is that climate change isn't about the planet. <laughs> it's about the people. It's about our ability to live a healthy and safe lives. Joe Biden is a people person. He went into government because he cared about people and he still does. And so his entire values have, uh, have led him to this place. There's no doubt in your mind that this is like our last chance, right? People say last best chance. I'm like, it seems like last chance. If, if we really don't make significant progress in this next four years, we are sort of fucked. This could be the last big opportunity for us to get this right. And, and you know, I'm a constant optimist, so I'm not going to tell you we'll fall off a cliff. Um, but I will tell you that if we miss this opportunity, we do it to the detriment of our families and our kids' future. It's important to invest in a clean energy future now if we expect to return to a healthy, safe and secure and equitable future. We should be all in.